Hi. Thank you. Are you guys talking about how much tequila I'm going to drink when I'm done? I am. Not to sound like a total cliche rock star, but uh, my tours this year so far have been like, how much tequila can I get away with drinking? It's been fun. <clears throat> I've been asked to speak about my instruments um, in keeping with the theme of the evening. 
That thing I was playing where I look like a damsel, that is called an auto harp. It is the world's easiest instrument to play. It's not the most common instrument, but you can be a dummy and be totally good at it because you just press one button and the instrument does the work for you and it'll mute all of the strings that are not in that chord when you play it. So it's an auto harp. This... Oh, shit, I forgot to put my dolls on the back of it. I haven't even had any alcohol yet. I'm just a dork. Um, I usually have a Charlie Chaplin doll back here. I don't think he's in here. And uh, this is not a boring brown box. It is an antique toy piano. And um, I started playing it when I, was, uh, when I started gigging around Los Angeles right after I graduated from college because carrying an 85-pound keyboard got old really fast. Um, so I'm going to play you a song or two that I wrote um, on this hair toy piano. This is called Devil's Flesh and Bones. an old-fashioned metronome. It doesn't do anything other than keep time. Um, if you've ever taken piano lessons as a small child, you're probably familiar with these. I only have it out for aesthetic reasons, really. Okay. 
This is a song I wrote um, for the toy piano. <clears throat> it's on my first album. I wrote it while I was supposed to be doing my taxes. This is called Start With Goodbye, Stop With Hello. Start with goodbye, stop with hello. Catching our breath out in the cold. Lover on fire, thrown in the mire. Scandalous man, maybe your plan will start with goodbye. Stop with hello. Never a hand, hardly to hold. Big city sway, move with the day. Wanting it back. Um, that last song, I will totally admit, the very beginning, like the very beginning of the verses sounds a lot like another song. Um, so far, I haven't been taken to court for that. I realized it after I wrote it and after I made a music video for it and everything. Um, this song, 
I wrote for um, a project that was commissioned by my friend Jason Webley. He, uh, he wanted to do a project that involved about, I don't know, maybe half a maybe half a dozen of us, um, his, his uh, favorite like singer-songwriter friends, to pay homage to a, a stranger, some woman's scrapbook that was found in a dumpster. Like It, it was just so moving and sad to him um, that he wanted to, I don't know, celebrate her life in some way, or at least celebrate like the power of serendipity and song. And um, I, wrote, I wrote this song. I wrote two songs. I wrote this one. Um, as like a more lighthearted song to complement the really creepy song that I wrote um, as well. I'm not going to play that tonight. I will, I will let you buy the album if you want to feel terrified. Um, but I wrote, I wrote this one. It's called Lark of My Heart. And um, I, when I was writing it, I was like, there, like, sometimes when you're writing a melody and it, like got a lot of classic components to it, like a really good, a really well-crafted melody, it's going to feel familiar. Or sometimes maybe you're plagiarizing and you don't know it. Um, and I have checked all my sources, and I'm pretty sure I'm in the clear on this one. And again, I still have not been taken to court by anybody. Um, yeah, yay for that. But I will say this sounds like a Roy, Ray Orbison song to me. It's called Lark of My Heart. Lark of my heart, dance in the dark and say you love me. Lark of my heart. Right from the start and say you love me. Lark of my heart, take back the night and say you want me. Lark of my heart, turn up the light and say we can be. The same, 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 I can see it in your eyes. I can't tell it in your lies, you know I want you. But I can hear it in your sighs. I can't feel it in your lines, you know I want you. Hello, 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 I can see it in your face. On every marble place, you know I want you. And I can feel it in your grace. In every golden trace, you know I want you. Golden 
face, you know I want you. I turned it off. I'm a genius. And that was my last song on the auto harp anyway. I um, Backstage there is a sticker on the mirror um, in the dressing room that says keep Reno awkward. And that is definitely how I feel right now. Sorry. Hope we can still be friends. <clears throat> This is the newest addition to my arsenal of instruments. Um, I So my, my buddy Jason Webley, that last project I was talking about or the, that I wrote Lark of My Heart for, um, that went so well and collaborating with Jason went so well that I begged him to produce my, uh, my album, um, which was released in October. And um, we were gearing up to record in December of 2014. We were emailing back and forth, and he pointed out, he was like, you have enough material for a new album, but not like like a lot, you know? Like, I, I didn't have a lot of options, um, and maybe one or two songs didn't quite fit with the rest. Uh, so he asked how I would feel about maybe attempting a songwriting session while I was in Seattle working on, on the project. And I was like, uh, okay, because I am a song, I am a songwriter. This is true, but I'm not a prolific one. So I like to, I like to, I don't know, like, uh, I like to write when the inspiration strikes, but sometimes you don't have time for that. So I forced myself to write, but it's worse than that. It was worse. It was worse than that for me. Um, when I got up to Seattle, it was like, he was like, surprise, you're going to participate in this thing called 20 songs in a day. And it is as batshit crazy as it sounds. Um, there's a group of songwriters in Seattle who do this to themselves like once a month at least. They wake up in the morning and they try to write 20 songs that day. Um, they might be 20 one-minute songs. They might be like, you know, 13 13 full-length songs and maybe one of them's good or maybe like part of a section, you end up liking it enough to, to work with that later. Um, but the idea is just to write as much as you can. And for songwriters, sometimes that pressure is, is very inspiring um, and it can lead to a lot of good results. But I said to Jason, I was like, no, I'll write two songs. And that's what I did. But on top of that, absurd challenge he wanted me to write on an instrument that I had never played before which was the ukulele and he showed up at my studio like halfway through the afternoon with a ukulele in one hand and a chord chart in the other and I was just like but it was a good idea because this is what I wrote this is called waiting around again
Thank you. <clears throat> so the ukulele was a good idea. Um, this is a 21 and up place, right? I'm not about to say profanities to a child. Okay. Because the story is just not quite as good if I don't drop the F-bomb. Okay. So here we go. I've been working on a covers album for a long time. It's become the bane of my existence. Um, it is turning into a grand, majestic beast, though. So I believe it's going to be worth it. Um, we're slowly recording this because I am dependent on the uh, schedule of an engineer. And um, I went up to the Northwest in the spring to work on the album again. I had originally started working on it like last year. Um, <clears throat> but I, I went to a part of the Pacific Northwest that is not cool. It's not, it's not Seattle, it's not Portland. It's an area called Tri-Cities, Washington. And there's no reason on God's green earth that you should know about that place unless you're really into, like, nuclear reactors. Um, that's what they have there. And my engineer happened to live there. And it was great. It was kind of like being in rehab in good and bad ways. Um, and so I showed up. And if you didn't notice, my ukulele won't stay in tune for more than about 30 seconds. Um, and I wanted to add a couple or three new songs to the covers album that were ukulele-based. And I was like, well, that is going to be really annoying if I have to tune up every 30 seconds. So I decided to take it to uh, a, an instrument repair shop using the powers of Yelp. And I found a place. And I walked in with my ukulele. And there was a guy standing behind the counter. And he was, he was cute. He was attractive. And uh, he... We got to talking, and he was so, he was really fascinated by this, like, fairy lady from California being in the middle of nowhere uh, with a 1950s Martin ukulele, and he was especially intrigued that I only knew how to play one song on it. Um, I left, I talked to him about it and left the ukulele there. He was not the person in, like, actually performing the repairs. Um, so I left my phone number, left the uke in its case, went to the gym, I'm there for like two hours, I leave, and I look at my phone, and I've got like a ton of text messages from this guy. Um, he was like, oh my gosh, I looked up your music online, so cool, I really like Pretty Little Head, that's my favorite song of yours, blah, 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 you're so awesome, don't be a stranger, if you want to hang out, let me know. And I was like, we can hang out tonight? And he goes, oh, okay, so we met up at a bar like you do. And we talked until very late at night. But the thing you think I'm going to say happened did not happen. And here's why. So we're at a bar for a while. And he suggests that we go back to his place, which was like six blocks away. So I was like, OK. And I followed him to his house. And we're sitting there drinking wine for a long time, a long time. And he decides he's going to play like five of his songs from his iPod for me. It was really awkward. Fellas, dating tip number one from Eliza. If you ever get the idea to do that, if you're trying to woo a lady and you feel like you need to play a bunch of songs for her from your iPod and like sit there and look at her facial expressions and her reactions, don't do that. It's really weird. And I said something. I was like, dude, what are you trying to prove? And so eventually, thank God, he changes the music to something a little bit more 2 or 3 a.m. appropriate, Jay-Z. So then naturally, I start talking about Beyonce. And I'm assuming that everyone in here, hopefully, has seen her formation video. If you haven't, you should do yourself a favor. Look it up. Not right now. When you go home. It's awesome. She's awesome. Uh, all of her outfits in that video are to die for. But there's this one in particular that I'm like obsessed with. It's uh, it's this like maroon romper. So it's got like it's got long sleeves up top, booty shorts on the bottom, and then like a giant. It's almost like a corset. It's so thick. This like giant black leather belt in the middle, and she looks fierce. And I say to this fella, dude, I need and deserve that outfit. 
And he looks me dead in the eye and he says, Eliza, you can't hang with Beyonce. So I looked him in the face and I stood up without saying a word and I walked out the fucking door. And I, that is my favorite thing from recording this album so far. I just love that there's some guy in the middle of nowhere every day, every time he hears Beyonce's name until the day he dies, he's going to think of me. Yes, thank you. Um, and and the, that was like not even the end of the story. The dumbass like kept texting me afterwards. He was like, how's recording going? I'm all, I'm recording a Beyonce cover right now, actually, which was not a lie. Um, I'm not going to play that song for you, though, right now. I'm going to play a different cover. Um, I decided to add this one to my covers album in light of recent events. <clears throat> and please be gentle, because like I mentioned, I only really play one song on the ukulele. can totally fucking hang with Beyonce, says I. 
<clears throat> um, this instrument is a glockenspiel. It's kind of like a little xylophone. But mine is special because check it out. Is the mic on? Um, mine's special because it's made of fairies. Listen. Yeah. Um, this song I wrote a long time ago now. Uh, it's from my first album, and on the recording, it's extremely different. Like the arrangement is totally different. And um, but when my friends bought this instrument and sent it to me while I was on tour. Uh, with a podcast called Welcome to Night Vale, I, I opened up the box, and I guess I looked like I was going to shit myself, because my friend was like, do you need to use the bathroom or something? <laughs> I was just so excited. Um, and I, I I just felt inspired to uh, adapt my song to be played on this thing. So here is a song called Pretty Little Head. Drop it down to the bottom Butterfly flows Like a soul to the top Kill for the thrill Better stick it where you got him Circle rolling under Running red to the stop Where's your mother? Fall down dead Dirty mind, dirty mouth Dirty little head I wish you were here I wish you make my bed Dirty mind Thank 
you so much. Um, I'm going to play one more song. The transition is awkward. I can't help it. Um, I will go ahead and seize this opportunity to be shameless and promote myself because I haven't done that yet tonight. Um, my name is Eliza Rickman, like it says. It's pretty cool because sometimes I forget, so this is handy dandy. Um, and uh, if you like what you hear and you don't have it already, I have music. Um, I There's a... There's a table over there in the corner of the room. There's a poster of my cartoonish face hanging from it, so you can't miss it. Um, I have two CDs, two well, two different albums. I like to tell audiences that my first one came out when I was 28. I think I was 28. Uh, and it's a lot more haunting and, like, spooky. And then my newest one came out last year after I turned 32, and it coincidentally or not, is a lot more like whimsical and lighthearted. So it's like the sad girl in her 20s who's had her heart broken a lot and she's pining for all these dudes, or the girl in her 30s who figured out, like, who fucking cares? Who cares? Um, Joy from Within. Both of those albums are $10. And I also have two different, two different kinds of stickers. They both involve my face and cats because cats equal success, always. Um, and those are on the table as well. And, and I have three different shirts, so if you're, like, just so in love with me that you're like, I need this on my torso, then we can work something out. There's three different options. Um, and, oh, yes, and the poster. There's a poster. I, I found out a long time ago that people feel weird about, well, I'm not fair faucet, that's what I'll say. So people feel weird about like just buying a big picture of my face to put on their wall. So I was like, oh, I'll have posters made that have like an animated Eliza. She's very cute. She's got a really long neck and like pointy boobs for some reason. I don't have those in real life. Um, but yeah, I've got posters. And an email list if you want to know when I'm back in town again. And I do intend to return so that we can keep Reno awkward. Mm -hmm. I think that's all. Oh, yes. And I'm on social media. Social media. I'm on all that stuff. Thank you for being here. Thanks for joining us on your Saturday evening. Oh, and I'm playing in Carson City tomorrow night if you're like, you just didn't get enough of me tonight. Uh, that that information is on the internet. I believe the, the spot is called Sassafras. Oh, and I guess in keeping with this, the spirit of the evening, I should tell you what these are. These are children's desk bells. Um, and I straight up just am copying a guy that I dated once. That's what we're doing right now. This is called Only For Today. Thank you for being here. Bound, inbound, unfettered to the homeland. Forget, regret, I do the best that I can. Your words, birds, flying o'er the ocean. I hear the words, bring me to the mainland of oh. Oh, 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 Egret, egret, we're two birds of a feather. A stone was thrown, and never mind the weather. On hinge the wind. A fortress in the venture, in a light, take flight, encircling the never. La 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 la. It's only for today, today. La 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 la. Darling, come what may, what may. Whether you will wander 
do drop the coin and pull the lever condones unknown forgettable forever i place your face on every wooden stranger i try my love but never knew the changes so farewell my hell i only dream in color grow unknown I'll be a better lover one day, some way. I'll yearn to find another insane won't take us all into each other. La 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 la. Only for today, today. La 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 la. Darling, come one day, one day. La 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 la. If only for today. La 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 la. If only for today. Because accordion is broken right now. Yeah. I, you know what? Is that piano in tune? There's a piano, like, is it? Yes. Is it okay if I play a song on there? Yes. Sweet. I'm going to be spontaneous. Okay, hold on. Give me a second. Let me get there first. <laughs> 